right, so this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while. Now, I'm usually one to try and keep things as positive as possible and not call anybody out, but that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to call out a company for making the absolute wrong decision in a situation, and that company is Con Sumner, and I'm going to be talking about their biggest mistake. So let's go back to the year 2007. It's almost 20 years ago now. Good Lord, time flies. Anyway, in 2007, they acquired the LeBlanc firm. LeBlanc is, or was, I will get to that here in a second, well known for making all sorts of harmony clarinets. That's basically any clarinet that's not a B flat or an A. Now they made those too. And now the reason I say past tense is there were two LeBlanc firms, LeBlanc USA and LeBlanc France. And essentially, they bought all of it. And LeBlanc France ceased to exist. LeBlanc USA kept going. Now, LeBlanc USA at that time was known as Vito. And if you've been around the band world a long time, you've probably seen the name Vito. It's just LeBlanc USA. And they've rebranded everything today as LeBlanc. But those are all the old Vito instruments. When they shut down production of the French side, they moved some of the production of those instruments over to the U.S., but they pretty much abandoned a lot of the others. Some of the stuff that was really some of the best out there, their alto clarinets, they were really some of the best. Um, but the big one is both firms, LeBlanc USA and LeBlanc France, made a contrabass clarinet. In fact, LeBlanc France made two. They made the famous paperclip model, and then they made a straight model. Both of those were in metal. LeBlanc USA, and to let's just make this a little easier. LeBlanc, if I'm going to say LeBlanc, it's going to refer to the French side. And if I say Vito, it's going to refer to the American side because it'll get confusing otherwise. So LeBlanc had the paperclip and a straight model, both in metal. Vito had a plastic instrument that was kind of a copy of the LeBlanc straight instrument. Now, when both sides merged together under Con Selmer, of those three instruments, they kept one. They kept the Vito, the plastic straight instrument. Now, there was probably one reason they kept this. It was the cheapest of the three. However, it's not the most useful. In fact, it's probably the least useful of the three instruments. And there's a few reasons for that. The biggest one is that they forgot to look at who their primary customers are, and that's schools. Now, if you want a school to have an instrument, that means you're going to have a student playing that instrument. And that student needs to be able to practice that instrument. And herein lies the problem. With the Vito contrabass clarinet, most students can't take it home. Why can't they take it home? Because it is giant. They made the bad decision here to not have the instrument come apart. It is a single piece that is six feet tall. I'm six two. It's as tall as I am. Now, think about a typical high schooler who's probably going to be smaller than I am. Um, how are they going to maneuver this instrument? How are they going to get it home? For reference, this is the case of a Bundy great bass or contra alto clarinet. It's about five feet tall, just barely big enough to fit into my car. I can put it in the back seat of my car 
I just barely have enough room to close the doors. Can't do that with a case that's still another foot taller. In fact, it's really more like a foot and a half because the instrument's six feet. The case is about six six. So, and for all of those of you who are out in metric land, which is the normal part of the world, it's about nearly two meters tall. So, a student can't carry this case around. They can't take the instrument home and practice. They can't take it on the bus. In fact, <laughs> you can't really even get this thing through a lot of doors. I don't know how easily it would be to get through my front door with the front door and a storm door. I'm going to break something. So, this is a poor, poor design choice because you can't maneuver the case. The straight LeBlanc, the French version, had the advantages that it comes apart and it can be fit in a case this big. I can fit that through a door. I can fit that in my car. I can take it home and practice with me. You can't do that with a case that's 6'6". Sorry, it's not happening. So that's strike one, you can't move it. Strike two, you either have to stand to play or you have to sit on a tall stool to play, meaning you're gonna kinda stick out for the rest of the ensemble. You can't sit in a normal chair. And if you want your concha clarinet to sit with the rest of the clarinets, you're probably out of luck because most of the time, those low clarinets are very close to the center of the ensemble. Well, you don't really want to have someone sitting on a stool. Doesn't really work. So you have to have a special chair for it. Strike three. Now, both the Vito and the straight LeBlanc went to low E flat. However, the paper clip went to low C, except the earliest run, which went to low D. And they had low Ds for about 10 to 15 years before the, the low C became standardized. The difference between a low E flat and a low C might seem negligible, except the fact that today we expect bass clarinets to all go down to low C. It's becoming more and more required that a bass clarinet has the low C. Well, if we're going to have an instrument that's designed to double the bass clarinet at the octave, then it needs to do the same thing. I talked to the contra clarinetist of the Dallas Winds uh, several years back, and she had been playing a veto for years and years, and all of a sudden they started programming a lot of works by John Mackey. And John Mackey expects the contra clarinet to have a low C, and that note is prominent. And so what did she do? She had to go out and find an old LeBlanc paperclip and upgrade, because the veto was no longer adequate for her needs. And you're seeing this more and more. Composers are looking at orchestration books, like mine, and they're, you know, looking and say, okay, bass clarinets go to C, contra clarinets go to C, end the story. And so low Cs are becoming expected in wind band music. Well, the vetoes can't do that. The paper clips can. The paper clips also have the advantage of being very compact. You don't need to sit on a tall stool. You can sit in a regular chair, just like I am right now. You get the low C. You get increased mobility. You can transport the instrument. There is, are no downsides to the paperclip version, except aesthetics, because a lot of people don't like the look of an all-metal clarinet. But that's not a huge deal breaker. In fact, most players prefer the LeBlanc over the similar Selmer that's made in Rosewood because it's so much easier to play. So what I contend is that Con Selmer made the absolute 
wrong choice when of the three models of contrabass clarinet that they had available to them, they chose the absolute worst one and abandoned the best one and the one that players are most desirous of, the paperclip. Now I say this, I have heard rumors, a little groundswell that LeBlanc, well, Vito, is LeBlanc USA, is in talks to maybe bring back the paperclip because it's essential that that instrument needs to be brought back. It's, it's the gold standard of the contrabass clarinet. It's what all other contras aspire to. Even those real fancy summer rosewoods that sell for, God, are they up to about $40,000 now? They don't hold a candle to the LeBlanc paperclip. So if anybody at Con Summer sees this, this is my plea. Stop production on the veto and focus all the efforts on bringing back the paperclip because it not only is more versatile, it's better for students because a student can transport it. Its case is only the size of a tenor sax. You can take a tenor sax in a car. You can take it on the bus. You can practice it at home and it's not stuck in a corner in the band hall like all the vetoes are. So this is kind of my, my rant that I've been working on for ages and ages. Bring back the paperclip because the veto just ain't cutting it.